Okay, recipe testing for this eggless vanilla cake was quite literally the worst until I tried something completely different to what I was doing and then I cracked it. This cake is light, fluffy, and you wouldn't even have a clue that it didn't have any eggs. So to start off, you wanna preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius with the fan on and grease or line two eight inch cake tins. As usual, I'm using my homemade cake release for this, which I absolutely love. Set these aside and in another bowl, you wanna sift together your dry ingredients. I do recommend using the gram measurements in all of my baking recipes as well as any baking recipe because they're always just way more accurate. So for my dry ingredients, I've got two and a half cups of flour, two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. This recipe also has baking soda, but we're gonna leave that for now. And then using a whisk, just give it a little mix until well combined. Okay, set that aside and in a large mixing bowl, add in three quarters of a cup of regular yogurt, one and a half cups of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of vanilla, and half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then give that a mix until well combined. So the reason I'm adding the baking soda now is because the main purpose of it in this recipe is to neutralize the flavor of the yogurt so that our vanilla cake doesn't have a sour taste to it. Although it does help with the rise a little as well. Okay, set that aside and in a microwave safe bowl or jug, you're going to add in half a cup of butter, a quarter cup of oil, and one cup of milk and then just heat that in the microwave until the butter is fully melted and the mixture is hot to the touch. This cake is similar to a hot milk cake except we don't have the eggs. So all our different elements are ready now and your yogurt baking soda mixture should also be a bit frothy now like this. So the next thing to do is to add in half of your hot milk mixture to your yogurt mixture and mix that using a whisk until well combined. Then add in half of your dry ingredients and again using the whisk mix very gently until until just combined, then add the remaining hot milk mixture and again mix until just combined, and then finish off with the remaining dry ingredients and again mix very gently until just combined. Be careful not to over mix this, so just mix until most of the lumps disappear. Okay, so that is our batter all done and now we just wanna distribute it evenly into our two eight inch cake tins. It's okay if your batter is a little bit lumpy. It's best for it to be a little bit lumpy as opposed to overmixed. Then give your cake tins a little bang to get rid of any large air bubbles. And now these are going to go into the oven for 28 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cakes are out of the oven now. They smell incredible. And now I'm just running a thin knife around the edges to release the cake from the cake tins and then turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. Just look at how incredibly soft these cake layers are. So my cake layers have been cooling for about two hours now, and now I'm going to frost them with my favorite stabilized whipped cream frosting. It is so delicious, much lighter than a regular frosting. The recipe is on my blog, but let me know if you guys want an updated recipe video. So these cake layers have a very small dome, so I'm just going to level the tops with a serrated knife so that they're nice and flat. And then I'm placing my first cake layer onto my cake stand, and then placing a generous amount of whipped cream on top and spreading it out with my offset spatula. Then I'm placing my next cake layer on top and then again placing a generous amount of frosting on the top of that and then using my offset spatula to spread it out. Once that's done, I'm just applying a thin layer of the whipped cream around the edges and then using my cake scraper to smooth it out. And then I'm just finishing off by cleaning up the tops with my offset spatula. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gently catching that lip of frosting on the top and dragging it into the middle of the cake. Okay, now you guys can go ahead and continue to decorate this cake however you like, but that is my eggless vanilla cake all done. This cake is so incredibly soft. It has a great fluffy texture and a beautiful crumb, which I really struggled with when recipe testing. So I'm almost amazed that I managed to achieve this without the eggs. Mmm, so, so good. It has a beautiful, beautiful crumb to it, and you honestly would not even know that it didn't have eggs. If you try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content reach more people, and I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.